by a 25 year old guy. Last year, I started using the app Tinder because I was curious to see if it would work for me. I used the app daily and I got a few matches. I even had a few conversations, but nothing was that serious until I matched with a girl named Avery who was 23 and just four miles away. She looked nice and after we matched, I immediately sent her a message. She got back to me about an hour later. After that, we talked about general stuff, getting to know each other, and she seemed very nice. Only two days into chatting, she suggested that we hang out. I agreed to hang out with her. Avery told me that she worked until the night every day and we should meet at a local park at 10 p.m. I agreed to it, and the next night, I went to the park to meet her. It was a pretty big park. It had picnic tables spread out all over and a little pond surrounded by some woods. When I got to the park, I wasn't quite sure where to go, so I pulled my car to the side of the road and texted her on Tinder that I was there. She responded saying she was really sorry, but she was running a little bit late and she would be there within five minutes. I sat in my car and waited and looked around. The park was empty at this hour. It wasn't my ideal idea of a first date, but I really wanted to get to know the girl because she had seemed so nice and interested in me. Finally, a couple of minutes later, I got a message from her. The message said, I'm here, meet me by the pond. I looked around, but I didn't see any cars or people. There was a chance she parked around a corner of the street that I couldn't see, so I slowly got out of my car and looked around. It was too dark to see a whole lot, just a few dim lights spread out around the park. I got out of my car and started walking into the park. I took out my phone and told her that I was walking to the pond. It was a pretty large area near the pond, so I decided to walk all over it. When I reached the edge, I didn't see anybody, but I heard a car driving down the road, so I looked to see if it was Avery. The car pulled up next to mine and then parked in front of it. It was a black old beat up car, but I couldn't see who was driving because it was too far away. I started to walk over to the car because I wasn't seeing anybody near the pond at all and I was starting to get a bad feeling about this whole situation. But as I started to walk, I heard leaves rustling behind me followed by the feeling of someone pushing me from behind. I fell to the ground, and without even seeing who pushed me, I was kicked in the back. Then, somebody got on top of my back, and it clearly was not a girl, but a man. I tried to fight back, but I was overpowered. It was a large man who was very strong, and I saw he was wearing a hood. He grabbed my legs and then tried to grab my arms, but I fought back as much as I could. He started dragging me by my legs to the direction of my car. I kicked around as much as possible and was able to break free for just a second, which was all I needed. I immediately got up and sprinted into the woods and to the other side of the park, which led to some old roads. After I was sure I wasn't being followed, I called my friend to come pick me up. He came right away when he heard what happened and then drove me to my car. Of course, the account blocked me and I felt really dumb to be catfished, but at least I was able to escape alive. Recently, I have been using the dating app called Hinge. I'm a 29 year old guy and have been single for a while. I wasn't a big fan of dating apps at first, but my friend said some good things about them, so I joined. After using the app, I liked it, and I met a woman on the app that I thought was very cool. Her name was Emily, and after we talked for a while, we realized that we had a lot of common interests and decided to go on a date. I took her to a pretty nice restaurant nearby, and we had a really good time. She seemed great, and I thought it went really well. We decided for our second date that she would go to my house and I would cook. I was proud of my cooking skills, because I've always enjoyed making food and my family and friends always told me I was good at it. Anyways, she came over at around 7 p.m. and I made a pasta dish that I thought she would like. 
It went great, and afterwards we talked for about an hour, and then she asked for a tour of my house. It wasn't a big house, but it was decent, and I was excited to show it to her. She really liked it, and then after I showed her around, she told me she had to get going. We hugged, and then she left. I texted her that I had a good time, and I hoped we could get together again soon. A few hours went by, and she never responded. I was a little bit concerned because I thought it had gone so well, so I told myself not to worry, and I went to bed. I woke up several hours later at 4 o'clock in the morning. I turned over to go back to sleep, but I really had to go to the bathroom, so I decided to get up. I walked out my bedroom into the hallway and used the bathroom. On my way back to my room, though, I heard a noise come from the kitchen. I lived alone and had no pets, so I was pretty concerned. I walked into my kitchen to see what it was. When I got there, I saw the room was all messed up. Papers were everywhere, dishes, pots and pans. It was a real mess. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Then out of the corner of my eye, I saw movement and turned to just see for a split second a person leaving the room to my spare bedroom. I froze for a second and then decided to call the police. After I called them, I was feeling brave, so I went into my guest room and entered it. But nobody was in there. However, the window was left wide open and whoever was in my house had left through it. The police arrived a while later and searched my property but didn't find anybody. However, several of my valuable items were missing. After the police talked to me and left, I was exhausted and I finally went back to sleep for about an hour or two before I had to get up again for work. I took out my phone and saw that Emily still never responded to me, so I decided to call her, but when I did, I realized that the number had blocked me. Then I started to put two and two together and I realized she must have had something to do with my house getting robbed. I told my story to the police later that day, but it turns out Emily probably wasn't even her real name and I couldn't find any of her social media. Her Hinge account had also been deleted. This story took place a couple of years ago. I was a 19 year old female and freshman in college at the time. It was the beginning of the second semester and my friends convinced me to make a Bumble account, which is a dating app. It was four of my friends and I in my college house hanging out. We played around with the app for a while and matched with some guys, but when I matched with this one guy named Tony, my friends and I all thought he seemed cool and I decided to send him a message. He responded to me a short time later and we chatted for the rest of the night. He said he went to my college and asked to come over. I know it was a really stupid thing to do, but I gave him my address. I guess I thought because there was five of us, it would be safe. He said he was on his way and he would get there in 10 minutes. Sure enough, about 10 minutes later, we saw a car pull up. Tony got out and started walking to our house. He looked exactly like he did in his pictures. He knocked on the door and I answered. When he came inside, all of my friends were there and he looked surprised to see them. He was not even inside for a minute when he said he had to go. Then he left and drove away. When he didn't message me back at all the rest of the night, I deleted him. A couple of days later, I received a friend request from Tony on Facebook as well as him requesting to follow me on Instagram and Snapchat. I added him back and we talked for a little bit, but he was different than before. He was a lot more rude and I just wasn't interested in him anymore, so I deleted him on everything. The next day, I once again had requests from him. This time I decided to block him so he wouldn't bother me anymore. But then the day after that, he added me once again, this time with different usernames. I sent him a snapchat telling him to leave me alone and then I once again blocked him. After that I didn't hear from him on social media again. But about a week later when I got home from class I saw a car parked in front of my house. I walked past it to go inside 
but when I did, I heard the car door open. I looked and I saw Tony walking towards me. He didn't look happy at all. I told him to stay away, but he walked right up to me and grabbed my arm. I lived with two other girls, but they were both gone at class at the time. I told Tony to let me go. He said that I needed to shut up and then he started moving towards his car. I started yelling at him to stop and when I did, I saw our neighbor across the street who was a rather large college boy come out of his house. He yelled at Tony and then started to walk towards us. Tony let me go and got into his car and drove away. Later that day, I reported Tony to the university, but when I did, it was found that he didn't even attend the college. I know he still knows where I live, and I'm hoping he never comes back.